And welcome to episode one of Tiffany's Toolkit, a channel where I share resources for professional and personal development. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about Supercook, a completely free and easy to use website that allows you to make meals based off of the ingredients that you already have in your house. I'll be talking about the pros and cons of this website. I'll walk you through how to use it, and then I'll end by telling you how I use it to make my meal plans for the week. So I've been using this website for months now, but there's a reason why I waited until now, smack dab in the middle of COVID-19, to put up this video. And the reason for that is because this is particularly helpful if you are practicing self-isolation or if you're in a place that is on lockdown during COVID-19. Regardless of whether you hoard it and have too much or you're in a situation where you have very little, this website is going to help you out because if you hoard it, you'll get hundreds of recipes of what to do with everything in your house so that nothing has to go to waste or if you have a limited amount of recipe or a limited amount of ingredients and you're really not sure what to do with those ingredients, you feel like, wow, can I make anything with this little bit of stuff that I have? This will still give you dozens, maybe still even hundreds of meals you can make with what you have. Furthermore, this is also really important during COVID-19 because it will help you flatten the curve. It will help you avoid having to leave the house to go shopping so often. If you're cooking meals with what you already have, whether that's a little or whether that's a lot, that means that conceivably you can make as many meals as you can based off of what you have until you genuinely run out and you'll have to grocery shop less. You can save money and you can help flatten the curve and do your part to help with COVID-19. So with that said, I first want to begin by explaining that I am not an affiliate of Supercook and I am not getting paid in any way by Supercook to put this video up. Uh, honestly, I use it so much and recommend it so much that if there wasn't an affiliate program, I would definitely join it. But as far as I know, there isn't. So let's get started on walking you through this website. So this right now is what the website looks like before you insert in any ingredients. You're gonna get a page like this, your first time visiting it, where there's nothing here yet. Um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like once you've already inserted a bunch of ingredients, what it looks like for someone like me who's been using it for a while. But when you first start using it, you know, you go over to the side and you can either type in an ingredient, um, like let's say corn. And right from that first ingredient that you pop in, you already get 38 dishes you can make just with corn is the ingredient. Or um, you can choose from the categories and just start going down the list. This is the way that I honestly normally do it. Um, it. I do it this way because it kind of allows me to really go through my fridge and my cupboards and really start searching. So you can go down and just start clicking stuff. You know you have butter, you have egg, you have milk. There is 389 meals that you can make just with butter, egg, and milk. So let's say that's all you have for dairy right now. You go down to vegetables and you have parsnips, you have Chinese broccoli, and it just keeps on populating like that, so on and so forth until you get all the way through all the categories or you type in everything you have in your house and this whole thing is full. Now, this points me to one of the negatives of this website. And that's that if you have an ingredient that is not included in their category list, it's just not going to allow you to choose that ingredient. It won't allow you to make any food with that ingredient and won't do a search with that item you have. So it, even though there is a lot to choose from, 
in this category list, if you happen to have stuff that's not on here that you really want to cook with, it's not going to allow you to add it if it's not already included. So that's one of the first negatives. But now I want to go over to um, the super cook that I've been using for my ingredients every week. And you will notice here, I have 131 ingredients. And with that, I am able to make 22,451 meals. And here is a pro that is tied with Supercook that I think is awesome. So every time I go to supercook.com every day, it saves the ingredients I already have inserted in the foods that I can make. Every time I go to this website, I don't have to go in and enter in all the ingredients I have every single time. Now, that's not to say that I don't regularly go in about once or twice a week just to keep it updated so that my meal plans that I create is updated with the actual ingredients I have. But I don't have to worry about putting in 131 ingredients every single time I use it because it is going to be here still. The only way that this won't stay is if uh, you clear your cookies or you access this website from a different device, which is what I did. So this, uh, this right here is Firefox. This is what I normally use um, when I'm browsing the internet. So every time I open Firefox and go to supercook.com, all of these settings show up. But for this video, I went and I opened Microsoft Edge. And as you can see, it's not saved here, which is perfect for me showing you what it'll look like the uh, very first time you use it. So to go back here, I just want to continue to walk you through this website. Now, I want to go over the other parts of this website. Uh, as you can see at the top, it, it, there is an app for Supercook as well. Unfortunately, I do not use the app. I generally stick to my computer's use of it. So I cannot tell you what the app is like versus the version on a computer. Uh, maybe one day in the future, I'll actually do a comparison video about the Supercook app versus the uh, desktop version but you are able to get on your phone and use it as well. Um, and now I wanna go to a, another negative and that is um, this right here. If you sign in and create an account, um, the at least the desktop version of Supercook appears to have a problem with that. So just, is an FYI, when I tested this, um, I just signed in on Facebook with my Facebook account. And when I did that, it practically broke the website. It All of my ingredients went away. Um, nothing I clicked would actually save. This number wouldn't populate. I had to completely start over and insert in all my ingredients. Um, so the benefit of creating an account, what it's supposed to do is that if you create an account, you can um, click this heart icon to favorite the account in Supercook itself. So then when you go here and go to when you go to supercook.com and you click on your profile, you can look at your favorites list on the website and keep track of things that way. I personally don't keep track of foods that way. Um, obviously because it didn't work for me, but even before I tested that, it never occurred to me to favorite the recipes I want directly on the website. The way that I do it is when I click a recipe and I look through it and I look at people's comments to see if it's something I genuinely want to try, I press control D, at least, you know, on a, a Windows. And um, I have a folder called ingredients already in the home recipes. And then I just tag, you know, I go appetizer or sauce or, you know, um, dinner or lunch or dessert. You know, I just create tags myself and I just go into this folder and pull up the recipes that I really want to work with that way. Um, that's the way that I keep track. So just to rewind a little bit, 
um, maybe it'll be different for you. Maybe if you actually just provide your email and your password and do an account that way, maybe it'll work. Maybe just avoid Facebook. But what I can tell you for sure is that when I tried to sign in on Supercook to create a website, it just broke Supercook. So Supercook is still awesome in spite of that, but I don't want you to get to the situation I was at where I had thousands of great meals saved up and 131 ingredients entered in and it all just disappeared when I tried to create an account. That was that was a bummer. Um, so now I want to show you this section right here, which is really, really cool. Um, I don't have any diets that I'm adhering to, but if you do, you could click one of these and see what recipes come up based off of the diet you chose. Obviously, I don't know what, how well to trust Supercook to make sure it is legitimately following this diet. You should be very careful to click on these, these recipes yourself and really look through the ingredients on your own and make the judgment your own self about whether it's true to the diet. And you can choose more than one diet and the, um, the recipes will continue to narrow down to fit both of these diets at the same time. Now, what I use the absolute most, one of my favorite functions is this key ingredient function. So let's say you found this really cool recipe that required a bunch of fresh fruits or fresh vegetables, and you bought a whole pack of it but the recipe called for you to use just one, you know, um, and you don't want it to go bad. For instance, bay leaf is one of those items. I bought a container of bay leaf and I made a recipe recently that wanted me to use only one bay leaf. And now I have like eight bay leaves left. What am I going to do with all these bay leaves before they go bad? So what you do is you click the ingredient that you want to focus on and it'll pull up recipes that use the other 101, 131 ingredients you have, but also focuses specifically on the use of a bay leaf. So as you can see, this has bay leaf. This has bay leaf. All of these ingredients will all have bay leaf so that if you really want to focus this week on getting rid of that bay, all those bay leaves before they go bad, you can get a bunch of recipes that use it. And now that fresh ingredient does not have to go to waste because you had a meal that only called for one when you bought a whole pack. And like diet, you can click on multiple. I did this recently. Um, I had leftover bacon and I had, let me see. I had leftover bacon and I had fresh lime. And I really, really wanted to use them both before they went bad. So I put them in and I just saw what came up and then I was able to make a meal based off of it. So I felt better, like I wasn't wasting money and I was putting all my fresh ingredients to use and that these were meals I could make with everything I already had in my kitchen, but focused on these ingredients so that they don't go bad. I think that's one of my favorite uses of the website and why I keep using it in spite of just the, the, the small negatives I found. There's also meal types. Um, so if you wanna focus on breakfast foods or desserts or one of my favorites, drinks, I was very surprised that drinks was a meal type on here. You know, so now you can make chai tea latte, you can make, um, golden chai. You can make um, North African spice blend, which, you know, isn't a drink. So basically this isn't perfect, but I have saved a bunch of drinks in here to try too, based off of the ingredients that I have, which is really cool. And the last thing um, up here to show you is uh, the cuisine. Um, so if you wanted to focus on uh, French food, um, you could do that. Um, then it'll show you only things that are French. Um, but of course, like I said, sometimes these options aren't, you know, completely true. You know, it pulls up whatever the websites they pull the recipes from says it is. So it depends on if what it pulls from those other websites are even correct. Something else I really like that's cool is, so maybe when I put this together, this recipe list together, I didn't have ground beef. Well, let's say that 
I entered in all my ingredients three days ago. And yesterday I went shopping. And when I went shopping, I happened to just buy ground beef. And then I happened to buy, um, I happened to buy chicken breast. So then when I click both of those things, now um, it says up here, I have 133 ingredients now. And now I get a bigger variety of foods I can make that include those two new ingredients. And so that's also a really cool feature of this. Yeah, this is how you use the website. You insert in ingredients over here. You use this section to focus on the diet or a key ingredient that you don't want to go bad and you just want to use that or you just have a craving for it. You can choose a meal type. You can choose a cuisine. Um, and if there are any new ingredients that the website suggests that you should insert in to get more optimal uh, foods based off of your other ingredients you already have, you know, you can just click it to easy add it. Or if you go shopping and you want to update this list, just go in and add another ingredient that you recently bought. Or if you cooked and you ended up running out of bacon, just remove that from the list. You know, you don't have bacon anymore. Maybe you did when you put this list together, but you used it. So now it'll change to update that. So that's everything you need to know for the website. And just as a reminder about the pros and the cons, the pros are that as long as you don't clear your cookies or you access this website on uh, the same device, this list of ingredients and matches of meals will remain here. It will not go away. That's super handy. It saves you time. But the negatives is that if you have an ingredient and you insert it in or you go searching for it in this category and it's just not here, you cannot use it. This website is limited to what they already have here. Um, so maybe you won't be able to make meals with everything, um, which kind of which is kind of a bummer. They do have a pretty sizable list though, so I wouldn't feel like you're totally missing out if you can't insert in that one ingredient you have that's not on this list. But that is a negative. And last of all, in terms of the negatives, is that um, if you wanted to start an account here to save, at least on the website version, and it, or if you use Facebook, it's, it will break the site. So I highly suggest you don't do that. I highly suggest that if you like a, uh, if you actually like a recipe, that you click it and you save it to a favor of, of your own folder and you use tags to keep track of it. So those are the pros and cons, and that's how to use the website. If you have any questions that I didn't cover, please comment below and let me know, and I'll do the research or I'll answer uh, the question you have by responding directly to your comment. So uh, I wanted to end this by showing you how I use this website for my weekly meal plans. Um, so I use... Uh, a sheet that looks almost exactly like this. I bought mine from Target, but um, I'm going to put a link in the description below um, to this what's for dinner meal plan. But every single week um, I go to Supercook and I, I check the ingredients I currently have. And then I uh, insert it in here. And then after I do that, I search for foods that I can make with those ingredients. And then I go uh, to my meal plan sheet and I plot out uh, what I'm going to cook through the week on the different days of the week. And then um, I put here where what items I need to shop for. And the cool thing about here, about this uh, formatted meal planning sheet, is that you'll see these dotted lines here. These dotted lines are so that you can rip out the shop portion of the meal plan and take it with you to the store. And, um, and then you can buy all the ingredients for all your plans of meals for the week and uh, do it all at once. And so I only go shopping generally once or twice a week. Um, I go shopping right after I uh, update these ingredients. And then I put together my meal plan. If I'm doing a lot of food with a lot of really fresh stuff, 
I try to spread it out so that things won't go bad halfway through the week. So I don't want to buy a bunch of fresh ingredients on Monday and then have a meal all the way on Sunday that I bought all the fresh ingredients for on Monday and then everything goes bad. So what I end up doing is I'll buy, if it's a lot of fresh food, I'll buy stuff for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then on Wednesday, I'll go shopping again and I'll buy stuff for the rest of the week. But um, I don't cook every day. I think that's really exhausting. Me and my boyfriend tend to take turns cooking. And what we'll do is we'll cook, say, Monday, Tuesday. And Wednesday, we'll have a treat day. We'll eat leftovers. We'll eat frozen food, food, or we'll go out on a date. Then we'll cook again on Thursday and Friday. And then on Saturday or Sunday, we'll have another date night, another frozen food, leftovers. Um, you know, we try to mix it up. Cooking every day can get really exhausting. Um, and I just think it's good to treat yourself occasionally or just make sure you actually eat all the leftovers. But we are a household of just two people. So that kind of makes a difference in terms of cooking every single day. Uh, so like I said, I will link this uh, meal plan in the uh, description below so that you can order this and use it based off of the recipes you found on Supercook to meal plan for the week. And that is all I have for this video. Later on, I think I would like to do a comparison video between other websites like Supercook that allow you to make meals based off of what you already have. So if you go to google.com and you search for make meals with ingredients, I have, you will get other websites. You know, Supercook is at the top, but you'll get my fridge food. You'll get all recipes. You'll get other websites that allow you to do what Supercook does. So later, um, I'll maybe make a video where I actually compare Supercook versus my fridge food versus all recipes and any other websites I find to see what really is the best. I've been using Supercook for months and probably will continue to use it. It has been very helpful for me and I love that it saves me money and time. But um, that doesn't mean that there are other websites that do it better, that have less cons. Um, but if you have any questions about anything I discussed in this video or you use Supercook or some other platform, please comment below and explain any tips you have or anything that I might have left out. And while I would love it if you like this video or subscribed to my channel, what I think is most important is that if you like this video and you're watching this in the midst of COVID-19, please share this video with others because I think that it'll be really helpful for people who are now cooking at home for the first time daily, who have limited funds and are really struggling to figure out what to cook or who hoarded a lot of ingredients and don't know what to do with everything but don't want anything to go to waste. But most of all, share this video because if you're watching this during COVID-19, this will help you flatten the curve and do your best to stay home and help stop the spread of COVID-19. And if you're watching this video and COVID-19 is a long ago part of the past and has no impact on your life anymore, this is still helpful. Like I said, I've been using Supercook for months before COVID-19 was anything on the horizon at all. And it is helpful whether you have a lot of food in your home or you have very little food in your home. It's going to be helpful regardless. So thank you very much for watching this first video of this channel. I really appreciate it. And I'm so happy to finally get this channel started. I've been putting it off for a long time, but hey, I'm at home for COVID-19. There is no excuse for me to not get this channel going. So thank you very much. And I hope you stay safe and healthy.